Hello everyone, John Butler here from the UK. Just going to show you how to use Immersive Reader in the new Edge browser based on Chromium. So here's a website, the uh, Independence UK newspaper. If I find an article in um, this that I want to uh, read, now not every single article will work with Immersive Reader, but you'll notice at the top here in the address bar, if it can, it will uh, allow you to. So you just click on this icon. Now Immersive Reader's got a few different functions. So the main ones uh, being that you can change the uh, text size, you can have it read aloud and you can change the background, but there are a lot more like changing the um, language it's read in and things like that. So I'll just demonstrate read aloud. Can Britain afford to stand up to China over Hong Kong? Analysis. As okay, so that's that one. If um, I wanted to, if I just close that one, if I wanted to make the text a little bit larger, I can do, put it on a green background. Um, what I could also do is space out the text a little bit um, so that it's easier maybe to break up the sentences. What you can also do in this more is just choose sort of a whole load of different colours. Reading preferences, the ones that some students do prefer to do is line focus so it just focuses on one line at a time of the, um, of the text so you can do that one and it will just focus in on one. When it's in uh, the read mode, it will then go down um, and you can just use the up and down arrows to read them one by one. And the final ones in terms of the grammar tools, these are really useful for English students. Uh, so for if they're doing an English GCSE or whatever the equivalent is in your country, uh, you can highlight the nouns and things like that and you can actually choose a different color. So because I've got a, uh, a purple background, I might want to do orange. So all of the nouns um, focusing like that. Okay, hopefully that was uh, helpful for you. Thank you very much. Bye. Hi, my name is David Dannemann and I'm a teacher from Belgium. And I'm going to show you the new tab uh, in Microsoft Edge. When you're using Microsoft Edge in, as a browser, you can click in, on the top to add a new tab page and you'll see that when you do that, you get a, a whole different view. Uh, depending on you, if you're logged in with your account, this is uh, I'm at the moment logged in with my work account, and you'll see that I see, can see my last used um, websites, but I can also see which documents um, that are recommended for me, which documents I adapted or added recently, or pinned with me, or shared with me, discovered, and so on. You can add this tab visual uh, right here with the page setting. You can choose to see content from your Office 365 environment or from Microsoft News. Um, so you can adapt or add uh, this uh, page setting. For me, I always use Office 365, and I always use the informational one. Um, because you'll see the difference, the focused, inspirational one or informational one. With the informational one, you'll see which documents you recently um, opened or, or worked on, which is very handy uh, if you just want to jump into a document which you opened recently. Let me show you another feature in Microsoft Edge. When you open a PDF file in Microsoft Edge, you'll see buttons like zoom in, zoom out, rotate your PDF file, uh, fit to width, but you'll also see draw, erase, and then print and um, save. With draw, you can draw on your PDF file. You can select your inking options. For example, I want to do it in red and with a very thin line, and I can just start uh, annotating on my PDF file. G, D, E, P, R, for example. So I can fill in this whole PDF file. I can draw some, some comments on it or, or some remarks on it. And when I'm finished, I can save my PDF file. Save not only the PDF file, but also the annotations on the PDF file. So if I choose to save this PDF file, for example, make a second version of this PDF file. You'll see that the PDF file is there. So this is my second PDF file with the annotations on the PDF file, which comes in very handy if you have a PDF file that you want to annotate and save very quickly um, with Microsoft Edge. Hello, 
Hello, <clears throat> my name is Thomas Bardoch and today I want to show you how you can use multiple accounts, apps and languages through the new Microsoft Edge based on Chromium. So let's get started. As I start my Chromium browser, my front page exists and as you can see in the right hand side corner there's already a picture of me. So if I go on office.com, I'm already signed in based on my ID and my email address and my Microsoft 0365 account. Today I want to show you how you can add another profile and use a different Microsoft Online account. So for people like me who want to separate private and public data or want to separate uh, through multiple accounts, for example, I work in another environment as well at eEducation Austria. I click on Worker School account and add another one. Um, I put in my credentials, my email address, eEducation Austria, put in my password, and then I have to validate through multi factor authentication, get an SMS, and just type in so this makes my account really secure so now the app asks me whether I want to uh, stay signed in into all my apps or just into the sync with the sync experience now I can enable it and use all my bookmarks with all the other accounts so if I go to office.com, um, I would expect to be logged in already with this new account. But as you can see, I'm still logged in with my account from my school. So what I do is uh, I sign out. I tell this browser now, because if you have a look at the bottom line, this is another browser. Um, I tell this browser now to use another account to forget my actual credentials, reuse my e-education account, type in my password of course, and uh, of course have to add another, uh, another time my, my SMS, my second authentication factor. So. What's now really cool is in this browser, if you compare it to the bottom left side and bottom right side, in this browser I'm now here at thomas.bald.bald.at and uh, in the cloud itself I'm this as well. Hi guys, my name is Matthew Haynes. I am a teacher in South Africa and I wanted to show you what a cool feature is of Microsoft Edge and that is the collections feature. So let's say you're browsing the web and you see a page that you would like to keep for reference or access at a later point. Now this is slightly different to bookmarking and I'll show you why. I found a page here on the Worldometer website and in my toolbar there is my favorites but next to favorites I have collections. So I click on collections and I'm going to add this. I can start a new collection. And let's say I'm doing research on COVID-19, for example. So I'm going to call my collection COVID-19 and I'm going to add the current page and have a look at what it does. I now have a COVID-19 collection, COVID-19 collection, and there it is there. I can add the current page. I've done that. I can add a note if I'd like to, just to, um, let's just do grade four current stats, for example. Click OK there. Awesome. So. Let's say I'm now browsing some more and uh, I'm looking up more, um, I don't know, let's look up something. Okay, and I'm, here we go, here's another web page. I'm like, this is really important. I want to put this as a collection, I want to add this to my collection. So I can just right click on the page and I can say add to collections and I can actually choose, there's the COVID-19 collection right there. So that's right clicking and adding it. Or you can click on the plus add collections over there as well. Click over there, COVID-19, add the current page. 
effect. What's really nice about this is that you can use this to form a complete collection, whether you're a teacher or a student, and then you can share this collection with others. I can click on my collection. There are my three dots. Okay, I'm op I've opened up my COVID-19 collection. Click on my three dots. I can send this to Excel if it was numeric data. I could send it to Word, and that'll just send all the links to Word. I can open or I can copy. This is really, really nice. Watch this. I'm going to say send to Word. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a Word document with links to all of my collections that I've made. Have a look. It'll open up in OneDrive. There it is there. Look at that. And my notes as well. Very, very cool, especially if you've got students who are doing research for an assignment. It's much easier to use than bookmarks as well. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Ortiz and I'm going to tell you a little bit about favorites in Edge. So to begin, we have the favorites bar right here. As you see at the top of my screen, I've got one website up there. Then we have another section called other favorites and I'll tell you about that in a sec. First of all, in the favorites bar, you can add websites or folders. So let's say I want to save this website on project-based learning. I'm gonna click the little star with the plus and make sure that I add that into my favorites bar. Okay, and now I have it up there. We can also create folders. So imagine I want to create a social media folder. I'll click that same star and I'm gonna do choose another folder, new folder, and I can label it social media. Last part about Edge and the favorites that I'd like to show you is something called Manage Favorites. So we click the star with the three lines and Manage Favorites. And inside there, we can drag and drop um, in function of our convenience and what we're working on. So if I decide that I no longer need social media, all I've got to do is drag and drop it into my other favorites. So now it's easily accessible, but just two clicks away here. It's a huge time saver. Um, it's good for efficient organization and everything is easily adjustable. So I hope this taught you a couple things about favorites.